No better time than now. What's up, everyone? It's America Plus. I'm your host, Cole McCormick. It's another week, another episode. What's going on, people? Happy to be here. Folks, it's another week. It's April. April 2nd. Happy April, everybody. Happy to be here. Uh, we got it. We got through March. Uh, we got through the Sat Slinger last week. Uh, last week's Sat Slinger was legit. It was awesome. One of the best Sat Slingers ever. Got over uh, like 800 downloads. So like that's a good thing for me. And I'm feeling good at that. Got a bunch of good boosts. A bunch of fun boosts. Um, some of the biggest boosts ever in my existence um, is in my wallet right now. Couldn't be happier. Uh, this week has been fun for me. This week has been interesting for me. Um, last week I talked about that homeless experience. I didn't talk to a homeless man, so, uh, that is, uh, that's good. It's some progress. I didn't have that weird experience. <laughs> um, but this week was just full of, uh, full of experiments. I've been experimenting a lot with different, different businesses. Uh, if you don't know, I've been, uh, without a real job since, uh, since 2022. And I've been on this wild journey of, just like floating through these different um, uh, money systems, I guess. <laughs> this other job, so I quit. I, I, long story short, I quit the weed shop. It was toxic, and then I'm out of the. I'm I'm out of work for like a few months. I wanted to spend Christmas at home, and then I find this tablet job. I'm giving away government tablets, and I'm supposed to be getting paid some amount of money per tablet. But uh, long story short, with that, uh, the most successful people in that business were cute Asian girls and I am not that. So, and I was, I was, I was making zero money. I was there for like six weeks, over six weeks. It, it was one of those jobs where I had to like be in full in charge of, of how much money I made, which I like. And I'm, and I'm like attracted to and, but it just wasn't working. So I, I ended up quitting and that was the first time I, first time I ever quit a job six weeks in. And that brings us to this week and this past month of what I've been building, and it's just been, it's been, it, it's been very, um, responsible heavy. <laughs> I'm just in charge of a lot of different things. Um, I started like this, I started my own Shopify store. If you don't know what Shopify is, it just allows you to build your own little like e-commerce platform, little, little website where you can sell stuff from China. So I'm trying to do that and I want to build it and it's just like hard. <laughs> This is like, I, I'm really experimenting with doing a business. I've never done a business before, so I'm just expressing in this opening. Like, I, I'm struggling, and I'm learning, and I'm, like, loving um, how to do business, how to do videos. You know, I am I follow Gary Vee a bunch, so I'm, I'm so on this, like, TikTok vibe. Like, you got to do TikTok if you want to improve your business. <laughs> but it's just been, it's been a lot harder than I, than I thought. And I have no money to advertise. I spent... I spent money that I didn't really have on advertising and it sort of like went down the drain. So got to stick with organic, the organic route. That's what I'm doing. Uh, but this week, what I, I'll, talk, I'll, I'll talk more about that later. What I want to focus on this week, the narratives. We're talking narratives, right? We're talking innovation. We're talking American society. We're talking about the future of ourselves. And uh, what I want to focus on is this new book that I've been reading. Um, it's from the author, from the doctor, Peter Atia. Do you know this name? Peter Atia. Uh, he has a podcast called The Drive. Uh, I think I first heard him on Joe Rogan. Um, but oh, uh, yes, yes, yes. The first time I heard about this guy, he was super into fasting. Um, this doctor uh, built this app that allows you to track your fasting time. This was back in like 2017, right? 2017, 2018. And th th this guy's, like, identity was, like, the fasting guy. Like, he was the fasting doctor. And I've just kept, a, like, a, a, a loose eye on him. I had, like, I, I, I fell down the fasting rabbit hole. Um, I got in those arguments, people yelling at me, like, you're supporting anorexia. And I'm like, I don't know, I'm just, like, looking at this doctor, what this doctor's saying. So <laughs> that was fun. And uh, throughout all this time, since 2017, since 2016, this doctor has been working on a book, and this book is about longevity, and that was a part of the reason why he was pushing fasting, and that's why there was like this weird fasting craze phase in 2018, 
uh, because of this guy and because of the science and because of the research this gentleman has. And uh, he just released a new book of, called Outlive, and I read the first chapter, so I know everything about it. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to break down the entire book. Um, but I do want to share a clip. I, I'm going to work through a clip this week. The, the whole clip's like two and a half minutes. I'm going to play and pause it. I'll, I'll, I'll give my two cents in between some stuff. Um, but I think Peter Atia, he's, um, I, I think he's a good mind. I think he's a good voice. I think he's a responsible voice. And, uh, what I'm really doing here with this episode, number 64, this is, you know, we're talking about medicine. We're talking about innovation within medicine, the, the medical establishment. How is this evolving? How are our institutions that govern our medicine moving forward? Um, and the answer right off the bat is within you and me. It's within the patients and within the caregivers. Like it, it, It's up to us to change this system. And the good thing about this episode is it's allowing me to express my absolute disdain I have for hospitals and sometimes doctors and sometimes uh, the government and sometimes the CDC and sometimes the World Health Organization and just the amount of corruption that happens within these institutions and how over the last 100 years, and Atia goes into the evolution of how medicine evolved, but within the last 100 years, We've had these institutions that have um, been pushing out medicine and have been um, helping people and and keeping people alive, saving lives, and I, I feel like it's all peaked. And I've I, I've expressed this anger. I've expressed being upset and and just just weary of the entire world. You know, I get I've gotten in a bunch of arguments with my girlfriend about it, and. Just, it's a continual process of trying to understand, like, why do I feel the way I feel? Maybe my feelings are misplaced. And so I continue to seek out responsible voices um, when it comes to medicine. And it's gotten even harder because th throughout COVID, you know, because, like, people that you, like, follow, like, I follow, like, like Dr. Rhonda Patrick, right? Rhonda Patrick, she's been on Joe Rogan a bunch. And, and she, her thing is like saunas, right? Like the thing that she focuses on is all the sauna science. And she's on Joe Rogan and she's like pitching the vaccine, the COVID vaccine. And like Joe didn't say anything about it. Like he didn't really like, didn't really like say much about it. But it's just weird how these people can, can be gung ho. Like these people within these, within these worlds and can be, be a shining light for a certain type of uh, science or a certain side of science, I should say. Uh, and then be on the complete opposite spectrum of how they interact with a certain product or with a certain routine. Um, and I think Peter Atia is responsible, uh, is a responsible voice with this. Um, so with, I, I think it goes without saying, I'm not trying to like shill any particular, uh, any particular thing. I'm not trying to shill any, any medicine or any like ideology. I hate it when people say things like, like, Oh yeah, like I totally agree. Like it's not good with like pharmaceuticals. Like they're totally the pharmaceutical companies are making way too much money. And then like and a few seconds later they say, Oh, you should really go to the doctor for that. If you have a cold, you should really go to the doctor. You know, I was just in the ER. Like the same people who say that they agree that it's not good, that pharmaceutical companies are making billions and billions, are also the same people going to the ER for some like strep throat shit. You know? Like, it's just, like, it's pointless. It's pointless. And here I am, like, I'm eating all meat. I'm eating mostly meat and, 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 and weed gummies. <laughs> I'm taking cold showers. <laughs> I'm working out at the park barefoot. Like, people look at me and I'm weird. Like, I don't have the vaccine. And people just... I'm just on a different vibe. So I'm trying my best to be, respo to be responsible and to not build up walls around myself. Because I've already, like, naturally, because of my decision-making, there's already, like, space, you know? But I don't want to build a wall within that space. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? So I really hope Peter Atia and this entire thing about— he's talking about the, this concept, and this is what the first chapter of, of his book goes into, this thing called Medicine 3.0. 
this could, uh, it's it's almost like podcasting 2.0, but it's better because it's medicine and it's 3.0. And I think it's wonderful. He, so he's g- given a quick breakdown of just the history of how medicine has evolved throughout the last few hundred years. We need to go oh, whoops. Hang into on. these wrong, total, totally wrong clip. Here we go. Okay, so what are they? So medicine 1.0 oh, is... Sorry, sorry. So w- real quick, there's, there's medicine 1.0, medicine 2.0, medicine 3. When we had no idea of science, uh, we have to keep, kind of keep in mind science. Okay, so what are they? So medicine 1.0 is when we had no idea of science. Uh, we have to keep, kind of keep in mind science is um, what? You know, it's such a political term at the moment that that's really unfortunate, but science is a way of thinking, right? Science is not a person, science is not an answer, science is a process. Thank God. Can we get a little a little round of applause for that guy? Science is not the answer. Thank you. Science is not an answer. That goes like, th- th- that's one of the reasons why I wanted to share this guy, because he's thinking about science the right way, right? Correct? Like science is a process. I remember during the pandemic, people were just like trying to look at the data about the vaccine and they're looking at the data. No, forget the vaccine. We're looking at the data for COVID. We're looking at the data for people getting sick, and we're being told that it's a lot worse than what we're experiencing, and then we're also reading data that it's probably not as deadly, but then all the coverage, all the media, all the experts are telling us that it's bad, 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 unsafe, deadly, deadly, deadly. People are dying. We need to save lives. And even Fauci, even Dr. Fauci, I remember he said like he represented science. He currently, he, he will, he does, he is. He said, if you question science, you are questioning me. And that's like, that was one of the most horrific, disgusting displays of our institutions. And just thank God, just thank you, Peter Atia, for saying that science is a process. Science is not a person. Science is not an an answer. Like, uh, just thank you. Just thank you. Prior to the invention of this idea, this is where you had sort of all sorts of crazy ideas. You know, if you were sick, it was due to bad humors and, you know, it was bad spirits and bad luck and all these sorts of things. But it really, there was no sort of scientific basis for that. So that, that kind of started to change in the late 17th century with Francis Bacon. But I would argue that the full transition to medicine 2.0 didn't actually take place until the advent of germ theory in the uh, late 19th century. So we've got about this 200 year period where you know Joseph Lister, um, all the way up to Fleming and the discovery of penicillin and antibiotics, that to me is the breakthrough of medicine 2.0. So me- that's the breakthrough right there. We just did it. We just we got through it. Now we're in like the 1900s, right? Isn't that when penicillin? Penicillin came out in like the eight, late 1800s. That's, that's what he just said. That's all. That's all good things, right? It's all amazing. It's in, it's interesting to look at the history and to see like how little people had when it came to medicine. Like I really just take I take this Tylenol for granted, you know, because like I am I might be one inclined to take an ibuprofen. Not currently, like not, not in the last few years, but like I am like I, I'm more willing to accept an ibuprofen in my body than I am much other medicine. Does that make sense? Like, am I weird for that? Like, I'm more willing to, like, I'm so willing to take NyQuil. I'm so, like, just automatic with the NyQuil if I'm not feeling well. That is, like, my medicine. Isn't that the joke with, like, Mexican parents? They're just going to put some Vicks on your chest. Uh, It's, like, these things, like, just become automatic within our lives and culture. But yet there was a time when there was no Vicks. There was a time when there was no NyQuil or penicillin, you know? Like, that's crazy. People were dying. So just... That is a good thing about the medicine. That is an amazing thing about doctors and about scientists and about about the process of science is that it leads to discoveries like these, you know? And it's the process of science that takes people on a on a weird, you know, tangent, you know? Like a person might be seeking a certain a certain outcome, but as they engage with the process of science, they end up finding they they discover something else that they didn't expect, and that's like, it just aligns with life, and it aligns with just like how how God works, and I do think there is a way that we can, that us as people, individuals, citizens, 
we can take on this this scientific scientific process. But hear him go on about how it how it peaked, how how medicine 2.0 peaked. Well, medicine 2.0 comes from basically three things. One is the 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 advent and acceptance of germ theory, the development of the process of scientific thinking, and then really the crown jewel of medicine 2.0, which doesn't come along until much later, is the um, statistical machinery to enable randomized control trials. Medicine 2.0 has really peaked, right? So it's it's been very good at dealing with acute conditions. You know, you get hit by a car, you have a life-threatening infection, you suffer an MI, a myocardial infarction, and you want to make sure someone doesn't die. Medicine 2.0 is amazing for those things. I had to look up what Mario, Mario incarnational, I had to look that up. It's a heart attack. He, uh, he referenced a heart attack. Myocardial infarction. Farction, not fartson. Infarction. Uh, which is super relevant. Heart disease is like the leading cause of death uh, within America. And and then the second one is cancer. So he's talking about how on the good side of the medicine, um, it has kept people alive. It has sustained wounds to a degree where you can stabilize the situation and then you can give that wound real time to heal. And that's incredible. Like, that is so good. And hearing this and understanding this, understanding this history of where it's come... Um, it can be um, it can be extremely sad to think about the current state of things and to think about how you know I, I can only speak for America right it's like ten grand for an ambulance you need to pay like ten thousand dollars for an ambulance last week there was a fire across my road there was a fire at the apartment across my building and the fire like they had like twenty fire trucks out. And I just I don't know who's gonna pay for that. I don't know who pays for the fire trucks. But what I'm saying is like, the way, the, the systems that protect Americans they cost a lot of money. And this is true for throughout the whole world. But we have this system where you gotta like the person who's receiving that is paying that, not just because because they're the person who needs it. Like it, it it's crazy. And science and medicine has only a. Uh, uh, created these profiteering structures that that pretty much harm people in my opinion they they truly harm people because if you have any sort of health insurance in America you know it's not a good idea if you're already sick if you need health insurance um you, it, it's going to cost you a lot of money up front and then it, it the price might go up later uh if you need immediate medical assistance if you want to go to the hospital it's going to cost you six grand to stay at the hospital overnight, you know? So you might as well go to the urgent care because it's a cheaper free thing and they might be able to just do it the same. Like you have these like premium and normal selections and then you have like a general generic selection and then you just have like whatever else. Then you have like the quack stuff. Then you have like the stuff that people are going to judge you for. And it's really just not working. It's not working at all. And I'm confident to say that we are all in agreement with that. And it's extremely easy for for one to be scrolling through Twitter like myself and to I can retweet every like fuck Fauci thing. I can I can save and bookmark every single government meme that I see. I can I can engage with with, with anger. Like that's a real trap, you know, the the anger trap like whether it be like a TikTok or a reel or or some sort of post Anything that just like like riles you up, like just like uh, that continues to complain or continues to to spew hate, like that's a trap right there. And for like the, for our souls, right? For our like like we demand justice side of our souls, like that anger feels good, you know. If you've been paying attention throughout COVID, like you've probably experienced anger, and you've probably experienced like you want to revolt and you want to burn down. The building and you want to like you want to you want a revolution like you want like i've definitely felt this like i've felt this insane just this insane like 300 type energy surging through my veins and i just like i i'm 
what would happen? Like, I come up with storylines. I'm like, what would happen if there was an assassination on every medical leader ever? Like, I, like, <laughs> like, I go through these, like, scenarios. Like, what if there was a movie? What if there was a movie where, like, every corrupt person was, like, no longer on Earth? Would the corruption still be around? And then, like, if I give myself time to work through that, I go, yeah, there would be. There, there would still be corruption. Like, it's not going to work. So, like, I think I'm in a headspace where I can acknowledge that the people who make the systems corrupt are also just people. And any mistake or any, yeah, any mistake, anything that Medicine 2.0 has done, has committed, um, or has tried to hidden, like, I, we need to, I need to acknowledge that those are people making those decisions. And even on March 13th, 2020, it was no matter how giggly they might have seemed, no matter how cheery they, they, they might have uh, uh, been, uh, shutting down the entire globe, shutting down the, the entire country, the entire economy, like, I, I got to understand, I, I need to hold on to that those are human beings and they're making choices and continue the empathy. Let's see what else he has to say. So that was 2.0, right? Now, what's 3.0? What I argue is that we have reached the limits of Medicine 2.0's capacity. And if longevity is something we are aspiring for, we need a new strategy. We need, a, we need as fundamental a shift as 2.0 was from 1.0, and that is to 3.0. And 3.0 is basically predicated on evidence-informed as opposed to evidence-based guidelines. It is predicated on absurdly early preventative measures for chronic conditions, which are now the dominant source of morbidity and mortality. It's no longer acute conditions. And it has to be highly personalized. And I'm arguing that we're not, of course, yet in Medicine 3.0, but we're now in that transition. And what I'm arguing is we should be accelerating that. Absolutely. I agree. I agree 100%. Let's, let's, let's accelerate it, dude. Uh, that makes me think about, uh, there was this thing where he said, he said, v verify, we can verify this. It, it, it's based on th this medicine 3.0 concept is based. Uh, let me just go back to it real quick. I think it was right here. To be highly personalized and I'm longer acute conditions, conditions, which are now the dominant source on absurdly early prevented. Absurdly. I'm sorry. I'm sort of like breaking my own rule about hitting reverse on the, on the clip. Here we go. Let, I think it's right here. Uh, what did he say? And 3.0 is basically predicated on evidence informed. Evidence informed. That's what I wanted to say. Evidence informed instead of evidence based. Um, because the institutions, the one reason why the institutions can be corrupt is because they can they can have their thing be evidence based. It's based on this evidence, but it needs to be on evidence informed informed right like that what's the difference what's the difference between based and informed based i think if we were to just stay in this covid situation they had a base of of uh, of data that made it seem like it would be smart to lock down everyone and keep them in their homes but now that we're informed we know that that is not correct that is not the path that is not good so I think that's the main difference, and that is the future of medicine to be able to to establish um, a process of uh, of understanding results. He said earlier in, in the clip about how one of the real innovations with with medicine 2.0 is the advent of the, he said he said m machinery he said the, the the machinery of uh, clinical based data right um, or clinical based research. Um, any study, like we need studies. Every time a person is going to like talk about carnivore, they might give you a study. Anytime a vegan is going to give you some, some propaganda, they're going to give you a study. Anytime anyone wants to make a point, they're going to give you a study. And that is evidence-based. But now we need to be evidence-informed. We need to understand outcomes before they happen. We need to know the outcome before we implement it. And 
How does that happen? That sounds like you were, you're trying to predict the future. It sounds like it, it doesn't sound real. It doesn't sound possible. But I'm here to tell you it is. I'm here to tell you it's, it's 100% possible, and clearly we're in a transition of making it possible. And I believe it's real. I absolutely believe it's real. Because when I think about it, when I try to work down the line, so I'm 26. He's talking about the future of how we prevent diseases. When I'm 56, when I'm the age of Joe Rogan, what is medicine going to be, man? What am I going to have access to? I hope, I hope I can give like a little, like, like an itty bitty, like lighter, like I can, I, I can give a lighter size vial of blood and I can insert that in a little AI box. I got a little R2D2 with me <laughs> and it's, and R2's telling me what cancer I got. Like, that's what I think is going to happen. Hopefully, maybe not, maybe not. But regardless of, of, of my fantasies, there's an evolution happening here. And if you're an individual who wants stronger systems, we need to engage with those better systems. And we need to call for those better systems. Something that um, Atia says in the first chapter of his book. So that clip you just heard, that was from a podcast. Uh, with, uh, when I was reading his book, one th- the, the, the one sentence that really stuck out to me was, um, it, if we want a better medicine system, then it's going to come from the patients. It's going to come for, uh, from when the patients demand it. So let's demand it. Let's do it. Let's demand the better system. Like, well, let's do this, boys. Let's, 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 come on, let's go. I'm ready. I'm ready for the revolution. Like, I'm ready to, to demand my doctor to prevent my disease. Prevent my disease, doctor. <laughs> or else. <laughs> um, is that possible? The only way that's possible is with, like, AI, right? Like, how else are we supposed to move into this world where we can prevent disease, you know? Of course, like, the simple stuff is, like, exercise, and that's what Atia says as well. Like, the, like the number one stuff is exercise and diet and uh, emotional health and... Um, very basic things, but as the medicine evolves, right? Like that, that's got to involve artificial intelligence. And that, that people get scared about this, man. People, people get really freaked out about, about like, or I, I shouldn't say people, I should say the media most recently has been really pushing the idea that AI is scary. And there was this, like earlier this week, that like, AI, there's like some AI conference and like a thousand, a thousand people in the industry signed this thing where they're going to stop doing research. They're going to stop doing AI for six months as if that's going to do anything. And the media just wants you to be afraid of it. It's going to take away everything. It's going to, it's going to change everything. People, some people want you to think it's going to take away jobs. Some people want you to think it's going to take away humans. It's going to kill you. And I just think it's going to help us make better medicine. I think it's going to help us make better movies. I think it's going to make just just generally just better stuff, hopefully. Um, but that requires, I mean, if that theory is correct, if we're moving forward throughout a transition, um, then that means that there's going to be like people who are like, like he, he mentioned a few names, like Fleming. Um, Fleming was the guy who was a part of like founding penicillin, right? I think so. Flem? <laughs> um, I got... I have one clip here from from the Lex Friedman show, and if we're discussing individuals, if we're trying to pre- if we're, if we're trying to predict who might be a person that can affect or can um, can enable medicine three point I think it might be the people who are building the AI. Um, but how would that be possible? I was listening to this Lex Friedman interview with the guy who's in charge of Open AI. Um, this company, the, 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 this guy's name is Sam Altman, and he's the CEO of of Ch- of ChatGPT. Like he's been like with it since since 2016 himself, or maybe re- even earlier. And this podcast is interesting because they, you know, they go through the whole gamut. They go through the entire um, fear and uh, positive, and they go through what it's how are these models trained and they go into just all this stuff, right? 
Th- this is the most interesting moment that I found in this episode bet- with Sam Altman. He, they're speaking to alignment, and I think that's a key word when it comes to the future of medicine. Alignment, the future of AI, alignment, the future of community, alignment, the future of Earth, alignment. It feels like you're kind of on the same page. It's trying to help you. It's the feeling of alignment. Yes. I mean, that could be a more technical term for it. And you're saying that not much data is required for that. Not much human supervision is required for that. To be fair, we understand the science of this part at a much earlier stage than we do the science of creating these large pre-trained models in the first place. But yes, less data, much less data. That's so interesting. The science of human guidance that's a very interesting science and it's going to be a very important science to understand how to make it usable how to make it wise how to make it ethical how to make it aligned in terms of all the the kind of stuff we think about uh and it matters which are the humans and what is the process of incorporating that human feedback and what are you asking the humans is it two things are you asking them to rank things we're worried about the AI not being like ethical. Like what about all the humans that are unethical, you know? Like but I I just thought that clip was interesting. I'm looking for alignment. I'm looking for alignment with AI. I'm looking for it to help me. I'm looking for it as a tool. And if there's a doctor who sees a future where medicine is is prevented is preventable or or, or medicine is what prevents the disease <clears throat> then I gotta believe that that humans need to take a conscious guidance around this because for the last hundred years, our medicine system has been guided by by money, by money being conscious. Money has been conscious, and now we need we desperately need the humans to become conscious, okay? And we need to guide our technology towards ways that actually enable us for a better life and a better body and a better earth. We, we desperately need that. And that means that we shouldn't, like, we should not engage with unhealthy systems, right? Like, on, on some sort of weird individual level, you need to make a choice to do that better thing. You need to make that choice to take the high road. You need to make that choice to to not go into the bar or not go into the into this whatever place, you know, if it's harming you. And I think as a culture, as a country, we have this system of medicine and healthcare and government, and it's like, it's been harming us. That's my opinion. It's been harming us. And we have a responsibility to make it better and, and, and to make it aligned. We have, a, we have a responsibility to guide it. Humans have a responsibility to guide it. So let's do it. Let's do it. Come on. Come on now. There's hope. There's hope for humanity, people. There's hope. Um, there's also hope for uh, the people who support the show. We're going to head on into the boost. Whoops, 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 whoops. We're going to head into the boost. Is that effect still on or off? Okay, good. I think it's off. Uh, <laughs> I hit the... You know what I did. Folks, we're... Uh, f- f- uh, let me do that again. Shit. Folks, we're going to head on into The Boosts. America Plus is a value for value show. What that means is I put effort into this content. I do my damn best to get my point across, and I think I produce a good product, and I give it up to you. You have the ability to show me how valuable it is, and um, you can do that through multiple ways. You can do that through your time, talent, or treasure. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you can head on to the website, valueforvalue.info. That's value number four, and then value again, dot info. To check out, you can see a whole just a, a whole page of how you can engage with value for value. My girlfriend calls it favor for favor, so that's a little more fun. Um, that's a good time. Like, If you're just listening to this, that's valuable. If you want to give up any of your talent, if you want to help me with like a project, you know, I, I'm talking about websites, I'm talking about business, I'm talking about Bitcoin, I'm talking about a lot of things. If you want to help me, give me some talent with I- any of that, you know, I don't know what it's going to bring, but like, let's engage with that. Or if you have any treasure, if you have any, I say Satoshis, I prefer Satoshis. We're, we're doing all this, we're doing value for value mainly through the Fountain app. 
Um, th- this is that is the best app to engage with America Plus. Um, th- it's the Fountain Dot FM app. Um, it, it, it's the only app that pays you. This isn't like an ad for it. Like I'm just like, I've just been like a a cheerleader for it. Like I swear to God, I'm not getting. I don't get paid from Fountain. I get paid from you. Um, hello, Shannon. Hey, I'm still recording. Just so you know. Uh, yeah, Fountain. It's legit. Um, every month. Every last Sunday of the month, I do this thing called Sat Slinger. Last week, you missed it, um, or at least I hope you didn't. Um, Sat Slinger is when I give away thousands of Satoshis, and last week I, I gave away like 4,100, like 4,100 Satoshis. Like, what do you think of that? And that's just free money, just, like just for listening. Like, if you're listening on, uh, to any podcast on Fountain, you're literally getting free money, which I think is like insane. And just like the future, like this is, this is podcasting 2.0. Like we're talking about the future here, folks. Like it doesn't stop. It never stops. And I'm going to be reading some of the boosts, uh, from the, uh, from the last episode from the sass slinger. Let me head there real quick. Do, 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 I had it and then it didn't, and then it's not there anymore, but we're going to get there right now. Um, these people saw value in my words. These people are willing to engage their words with this experience. So right off the bat, just thank you to them. I'm going to go from the lowest to the highest. The first person to give their value is at Leslavik. They send in 100 sats and they give a little, uh, a a little heart. It's a little uh, like old school text heart. Thank you you so much. At HJ, you send in 100 sats. They go HBD. Happy birthday. Boost me, bitch. Thank you. Yeah, last week was my birthday. I, I forgot to mention that. I turned 26 last week. Um, I was at Universal. It was a hell of a time. And I gave away money. I, ga- I gave money to my audience on my birthday. Like, I think that's I think that's a sign that I'm a good person, right? At Frodo33, 100 sets. Thank you for a great show. Thank you. Boost. Thank you for the great show. Thank you for the sets, Frodo. And then at Frodo33 again, happy birthday, bro. I'm glad you, I'm glad to have you as a new podcast saved on my favorites. Yes. Boost. Boost me, bitch. Thank you. Thank you, Frodo. Dude, I'm happy I'm in your favorites. Like it's, I never know when that happens. Like I never know the followers. I, I, it's so hard to know like who's really listening to a podcast, but it's these Satoshis and it's these messages that can actually confirm the value. That's the feedback loop that like that gets me going. Like it, that, that gives me some dopamine, dude. At Crypto Cena's Crypto Cena's, you send in one hundred and one sats. You say happy birthday. Thank you. And now, as the French say, it is time for le boost. At Viking USA, four hundred and eleven sats. He says, happy birthday. Keep spreading the solid info. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Boost me, bitch. Yes, I will. Yes, I will. And then we got my boy. My boy. My guy. Joel at Joel W. He sends in 1,111 sats. He comments, only in L.A. will... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me start over. Only in L.A. could a homeless man... A vegetarian exist. WTF? Sounds like dude got his hustle tuned in, though. Yeah. It's basically, you put Bitcoin with anything, and all of a sudden, that is more efficient. Yeah, Joel's uh, commenting on the homeless man story I had last week. I, This guy, I'm walking into Sprouts, and this homeless man asks me if I can buy him any, uh, any hummus. And I'm like, okay. And then I decided to buy him some more stuff. I, I, I decided to be a good person. I bought him hummus, a loaf of bread, and some like venison bites because I, I like venison is delicious. And then he he gets it. He's like, oh, dude, sorry, man. I'm vegetarian. Okay, dude. Sorry. So that's what Joel's saying. And then the last two are from Joel W. as well. So J- at Joel W., he sends in another 1,000. I think this is called, what, a row of sticks? A bag of sticks? I forget what, what this one's called. 1,111. He goes, favor for favor boost for your girlfriend's A-plus cake. Hey, now. Boost me, bitch. Hey, now. Hey, I, that's true. My girlfriend has a nice cake. Oh, she's in the bathroom. I thought she was going to laugh. Never mind. 
Um, but th- uh, Joel, thank you for complimenting the artwork. He was complimenting that the episode number sixty three's artwork. Little shout out to Sa- to Shannon Passy. She got ten percent of the sats from from the sat slinger. That happens every sat slinger um, because she deserves it because like she makes these fun little drawings. They're very adorable. They're very cute. They're very good. And then the last one at Joel W. This is th- this is crazy. I didn't expect this when I saw this come up. I didn't like I my my jaw dropped. Joel W sends in eleven thousand and one hundred and eleven sets. He added And now for a late birthday boost. Joel! It's basically boost you put Bitcoin with boost anything, boost me, and bitch. all of a sudden that is more boost. efficient. And now, as the French say. Thank you, Joel. Thank you so freaking much, Joel. Like I love you for that, man. Thank you for the birthday boost. Everyone, thank you again. Shout out to everyone who, who donated. Shout out to, to, to everyone who gave all their value, any of their value. Thank you so much. I couldn't be more appreciative to, to all of you people. It's beautiful to see people come in here and to just <clears throat> to just engage with this and to actually see what America Plus is. America Plus is simply just like the most raw version of myself, Cole McCormick. And I'm trying to build something cool here, you know. I'm trying to point to a brighter future. I'm trying to create better narratives. I'm trying to encourage people to 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 create their own positive narratives, you know. Like we all need a we all need a good story to cling on to. We all need something to 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 wrap our minds in throughout the day, you know. Like what are we doing this for? What are we moving towards? We need that. And America Plus is just a symbol and it's a it's a place where I can experiment and be honest and be be my most raw self as I develop myself. That's what I want. That, that, that's what I always loved about podcasting. It's I'm able to be raw and I'm able to learn and develop. You know, like it's just incredible. It's it's so empowering. And since we're in the back half of the show, I want to talk about my own creations for a minute. I want to talk about my creative process. I'm talking about my content creation. The podcast isn't the only thing that I do. Uh, I've been doing TikToks, I've been doing Facebook Reels, I've been doing Instagrams, and yada, yada, yada. I've been doing all this stuff. I've been doing, trying to do YouTube videos, like longer form stuff, and doing shorts, of course. And I started this journey in January, and I remember I, I, I had to buy this calendar. I had to buy this calendar, like like, and I wanted to stick it to the wall, and I'm going to do my calendar. And I, I wrote out, I, th- th- this is in like early January, I rode all the way through March, and I was like, I'll focus on April when it gets to April. But in this, in these first three months, this is what I'm doing. And I stayed pretty consistent with it. I'm not going to lie. I stayed fairly consistent with it. I was making shorts every day. I was developing a process to make my shorts. I was trying to figure out, like, what I want to post. I, I'm posting my drawings. I have this, like, daily drawing practice, and I'm trying to figure out, like, how my fantasy world is going to look like and i'm going to be i'm using these uh these drawings as inspiration for like animations that i'm uh working on too and i feel like there's something it's like a very slow 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 wheel has begun to spin um extremely slow extremely but it is now in the process of spinning and i feel grateful for it um, now we're in April. Now my calendar is definitely empty. I only have until tomorrow written out. And all I have is just more shorts. That's all I have written down. Just more shorts. More videos. I, I think I wrote down, what does it say? Pray more. I, I, I'm trying to pray more in April. But I'm in this place where, like, I don't feel lost, but I don't feel like I know where I'm going either. Does anyone know how that feels like? It's like I had all these ideas. I've had these instincts to move a certain way. I've I like I I quit my job in October, dude, and I've been in this, in this weird spot where like I'm just like selling all my stocks and I'm just like living off like just hope and like prayer and like, it's just some crazy. It, it's crazy right now. It's crazy. And then I'm seeing the entire world collapse. I'm seeing the banks collapse. I'm seeing like. I'm seeing the financial people just lie about what's going on. And I, and I just can't believe it. I'm like, is this really going on? Is this really happening? And how much time is there, like, until something really breaks? And 
here I am trying to put in as much time to build something. And I just, I'm, I'm in this weird, like, just juxtaposed position to everything else, you know? Uh, I'm in a different spot than a lot of my friends. I'm in a different spot than, than every institution, you know? Like, I'm trying to build my own institution. I'm in a different spot than my sister's. I'm in a different spot than, than my dad was when he was 26. When he was my age, he already had a family. When my dad was my age, he was already a family man. And I'm, al- and I'm not alone in my kitchen. I'm, Shannon's in the other room. But I'm, in, I'm alone in my kitchen in, 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 in L.A. And I'm doing a podcast and just like, what are we building to, you know? Like, I, I continue to say what I'm building to. is like, whew, like, I can get in my head a lot. It's not good. And I'm like, I, I speak that to say it's not good to be in my head. It's not good at all, Cole. Like, I, you, like you don't need to do that. Um, something that I heard earlier that, that, that is, um, that's helping me think and helping me um, understand my, um, my, my continual like evolution. There was this quote in this one podcast. It was this, it was this Aubrey Marcus podcast that I was listening to. And it's, the Aubrey Marcus, he does like more spiritual stuff. And just this really good line came up that him and the guest said. He, they said, uh, you cannot be the master and the victim at the same time. And I just thought that was brilliant. You cannot be the master and the victim at the same time. That, like, that's, that, that pokes a hole in everyone's bubble, right? <laughs> that really just tears down your wall with, 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 some, with some silly instruments. Like, that's just... That's crazy right there. Like that like that's true. That's true. You're either one or the or, you know. There's it's very rare like uh, uh, of course like life is gray and all this and and all the stuff but you have the ability to choose how you identify <laughs> as the master or the victim. Have you been victimized your entire life? Have you been victimized in the last 6 months? Have you been victimized by something or are you the master of this situation? Are you the master of your body? Are you the master of your mind? Are you the master of the community? Like, or like, are you are are you a master of of friendship? Like, do you have a handle on it? How do you choose to have a handle on it, or is something else handling it? And that just inspired me this week. That inspired me just to look at my problems, um, to continue to look at. Because so, I say problems. I mentioned this like e-commerce website. I've made zero sales, dude. So maybe this can be like a silly little shill for my for my uh, Shopify store, Cozy Q. Little little shout out to Cozy Q. Hang on, Cozy Q. <laughs> yes, sir. Cozy Q is the business I made, and the reason I I discuss like problems and and stuff is like. Like I thought it was gonna be easy, and it's only been like a few weeks. I've only had the store up for like a for like a, like a two weeks, and I'm upset that I don't have any sales. It's just because like, oh, dude, these these dumb TikToks. Every guy who has a Shopify store, he gets like ten grand a product. It's so crazy. They're just lying and bullshitting, of course. But it's like I watch that and I compare myself and stuff. So, and I don't have that. But my idea with Cozy Q, this whole brand idea, this whole brand idea is to. It's your number one spot to make your home more cozy. That's that's the idea for the website. So if you go to CozyQShop.com right now, you're going to see a cute little dog and a cute little cat and a nice warm blanket on the front page. And I think it's cozy. And I think this is like a good idea. And th- this Cozy Q thing, like, it just like popped in my head. Like when I when I discovered the Shopify thing, it I, for some reason, like, this cat in in w- within the letter Q just like came into my mind, and I had to like act on it right away. Like it was like a super impulsive thing. I was like, <laughs> and like I bought Mid Journey for the month, and I made this I made this AI logo, and then I made and then I had the AI m- make a realistic photo of a dog in a living room, and it just looks cozy and it looks nice, and I was like, wow, this is this is sick. And then like all of a sudden the website looked legit. And then, like, I, I got my license to collect sales tax in California. Like, oh, shit, this is real. This is real. And, like, it's like, damn, like, I want to do this now. Like, and I want to use this. My, my idea with this is to allow me to practice 
uh, growing a brand and holding a brand, like representing a brand. And hopefully that, like, people people vibe with it. People are attracted to it. So we'll see. So I'm trying to put attention to this. Uh, one of my new businesses, Cozy Q, folks, like, come on down to Cozy Q. Get, get your home more cozy. Get more cozy. You know, you get a little, like, hat for your for your cat, or you can get a mushroom uh, mushroom hat for you. You can get some, like, cute little, like, mushroom nightlights, or you can get some, like, some kitchen organizing. <laughs> I'm just bullshitting right now, folks. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. Like, th- this website's real. This business is real, but I don't know what I'm doing right now. I'm just laughing. I'm, I'm, la- I'm, I'm, I'm vibing right now. If you're, if you've made it this far, thank you for, thank you. <laughs> I'm just trying to learn here. And the other thing I'm doing, the most recent thing I'm doing is, uh, I'm on Fiverr now. I'm I'm trying to do narration and and just like voice voice acting. So we'll see if this works. Fiverr has to approve my freaking tax form. I don't know why the hell they got to do that. Why can't you just I don't any, I don't I don't whatever. But the, I, it's going to take a few days for them to approve my tax form and then I can start freelancing. So hopefully fingers crossed people people enjoy my voice. Um I think it's interesting. I think it's nice. I think it's I, I think it's payable. So I, I'm doing these random ass things, dude, while I'm trying to build a fantasy world, while I'm trying to learn animation, while I'm trying to pay the bills, like this is high risk. This is high risk and you get to live it through me. Okay. Like whatever, if you're in a safe little, like if you're in your truck right now, like stay in your truck, like don't, don't get a 2000 Buick. Okay. That's what I got. Don't get a busted up Buick. Okay. Like stay in your nice truck. The guy who parks next to me, he just him and his family just got this. It looks like a Bronco. It looks like a Bronco truck. I'm like, how the hell do you get a Bronco, dude? The, next to this Buick. <laughs> but the Buick looks sick though. There's, there's there's like a cool like retro retro vibe. Not like 90s, but not like anything specific. It's just like this like older aesthetic look. It looks cool. I don't know. I don't know. Um. But what do you think of that? Do you have anything to that that relates to that? Have you ever done some random business? Have you ever like how impulsive are you? Am I too impulsive? Like should I go on the podcast impulsive? Like I, I this is a moment in time that I I'm I, I'm walking I'm walking by faith. Like this is real. Like I just need to express that fully. This is a walking by faith experience that I'm having right now. And and I don't feel compelled to do anything else. I don't feel compelled to walk down to Jimmy's Burgers and get a job. I don't feel compelled to get the vax and go back to Warner Brothers to be a tour guide because they have a vax mandate to work there. I don't have the instinct to do anything like that. I have the instinct to lean into myself. I have the instinct to 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 lean into my own ability and to lean into my own learning and to... And to and to build my own system and to build my own community and to this is an incredible moment that we're in. I see so much innovation happening. I'm just trying to be a part of the innovation, and maybe I'm a little irresponsible, but I think it's worth it. Because I swear to God, something's gonna happen around the corner. I, I, I take a daily walk, right? The last thing before we head out, I take a daily walk every day. <laughs> And sometimes, like, I, I just try to get in a vibe, you know? I try to just stay happy. I try to stay cool. And I'm listening to music, and I, I'm in my zone, and I just get this feeling. I, I work up this feeling where I know something incredible is going to happen when I walk around the corner. And that's what I believe now. And that's what I'm telling you to believe. Something amazing is about to happen around around the corner. So get ready. That's America Plus, bitch. Stay free. <laughs>